Hi there, welcome back. Welcome to video, I think it's four, of this uh, series, the Grundig 2147 restoration. And as I promised in the last video, I was going to, and I did, do the recapping of the entire radio. radio. There's, there wasn't, there weren't that many capacitors to change, but I want to show you something. That is bloody brilliant. Perfect reception on FM. It's bloody amazing. Now let me try, I'll put on the mini whip. I've got to just move it at the back because I had it in the FM dipole in. Let me put it on the AM antenna and we'll see what we get on medium wave. Start at the end here. Got some artifacts there. This is where you should put speech. Local station. So this is sort of mid-afternoon and I'm getting uh, one local station, which is the only one I have. I'm getting um, North Africa and I'm getting Canary Islands, which is usual. Let's try long wave. Probably a bit too early for long wave, but we'll try it. There's our beacon. Very faintly, I can pick up BBC, I think it's BBC 4 in the south of England. Don't know where that is. Short wave. This is the 49 megaband, uh, meter band. Abgelegener Dorf war gerütet. Dann möchten wir einen Amerikaner verlernen, der einen ständigen Sinn in der südchinesischen Stadt Fermen hat. Hier unserem anschließenden Bad. 41 meter band now. Not bad. As we go up in frequency, we should get less and less and less. But this whole thing is working pretty well, pretty well, surprisingly well. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to do an IF alignment, starting with the, um, with the AM. 
Uh, I'm going to feed a IF frequency into the grid of the ECH81. That is pin 2, I believe it is. That's the mixer oscillator. That is going to send the uh, IF frequency through the first IF transformer, primary and secondary. It then gets to the EF89, which is the IF amplifier over there. That amplifies that and it goes through the second IF transformer. And that will then give us the signal that goes to the detectors. Now, I'm not sure if this thing has been messed with. I've removed some of the wax on the, uh, on the cores. This thing has got a core on top and one underneath. And um, if we look at a diagram, I didn't manage to get one, a full uh, service manual for this particular model. But I did get one for the... Um, what is it, the Grundig 97A, which is indicated as being the same. So what we can see here is we've got, uh, we talk about coil 1, 2, 3, and 4. So there's two at the top, two at the bottom. They are the ones that are actually marked in red. With the, they've got red cores on the, uh, on the actual transformers. The IF frequency for the set is... Um, 460 kilohertz. So again, if we look at the instructions, they tell us to select long wave. They tell us to feed grid one of EF89, which I'm not going to do. They tell us then we can do one and two with that one. Um, but if you go one step back and you're getting the whole chain and you uh, adjust, you feed it to grid one of ECH81, and that's uh, two and three, but because these two are in the way, you can do the whole thing continuously with one signal here. This is because this thing is receiving. If it wasn't receiving at all, you'd probably be best off doing it in two stages. Then we can feed in a signal with medium wave selected, again at the IF frequency, into the antenna. And there you select or you adjust coil five for a minimum. This is the IF rejection to stop uh, IF frequencies from leaking out or coming in, but mostly leaking out. And that should be our um, IF alignment. Let's have a quick look at the schematic and try and figure out what it is we're actually doing here when we talk about aligning the IF. Now, this is uh, basically in two sections. We align the IF for the AM sections, which means long wave, medium wave, and short wave. And you can also then align the IF for the FM. Firstly, we'll focus on the AM stations or the AM bands. Okay, so if we look at this here, what we have coming in at the antenna, comes down here, is the spectrum, right? The radio spectrum picked up by the antenna. In principle, it's all frequencies right across the band, most of which don't interest us whatsoever. Okay. So we've got a flat response coming in, as it were. Then it meets this guy over here. And when it meets this, that's the first filter that we find. And it's actually a tank circuit, which acts as a blocker. This is called the IF trap. And what this does is the following. Inside this radio, you are receiving frequencies and generating frequencies. Okay, we'll get to that in a second but you are creating frequencies too. You are creating um, a IF frequency, which is the 460 kilohertz, which is the IF frequency for this particular radio. And that IF frequency is the most important frequency of the whole lot, because that's the one that you allow to go through the various stages of the radio. That is the one that's ultimately going to carry your station information, your audio, your music, your conversations, whatever of the stations that you're picking up. So what you want to do is one of two things. You don't want anything generating 460 kilohertz specifically outside to come into your antenna. You don't want that. You want the 460 that's, that goes through your radio to be the one generated forward up here somewhere, which we'll get to, okay? So you don't want external ones coming in, and they can do, because you can have a radio right next door to, to you or right next to your radio that can actually generate that IF frequency, which will be received by your antenna. All right. That, in a way, is, is probably how they, uh, they detected uh, illegal 
receivers in the in the old days. But that's another story. The other thing is, because you're generating these frequencies here, you don't want it to go out and get radiated through your antenna. Okay, so this is an IF trap. Effectively, what it does is on your spectrum, you're going along here, you've got all your frequencies and it gets to 460 and it does this. Okay, so it cuts, it cuts the, um, the, uh, the band, it cuts the, at the 460 mark, at the IF frequency mark, it basically cuts your ability, the ability of that frequency to go through both ways, either way, this is a non-directional circuit, uh, it's just a tank circuit, okay? Right, let's carry on. So now you've got your, all your, your spectrums coming through here. You've got your radio reception coming in here. At this point, you haven't told your radio whether you want to receive long wave, short wave, or medium wave. That sort of comes next. And that is determined by the various switching points over here. Now, I'm not going to go into all this detail, but if you look at this, what you have is tank circuits and LRC circuits. So inductors, capacitors, and um, resistors, which basically do a pre-selection of your frequencies, of the frequencies that you're going to receive. And the way it works is depending on how these switches are operated here, depending on which switches are open and which switches are closed, there and also, actually also here. Let's see what else is activated at this point. This is all we're looking at, this, this section here. You've got, uh, it comes through here. Da, 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 da. If you look at it, this, this tank circuit here, or rather, it's more than that, this tank circuit here can simply be changed by activating that switch. If you activate that switch there, you see, that those two capacitors have now been, or rather this, the, the, uh, the signal across here has changed completely. Those capacitors are to ground. But this whole thing is shorted to ground, so your signal sort of comes through and it doesn't have that to play with and that way to go through. So it sort of goes through here. So that'll change the band that you're going to receive, the band of frequencies. Now, what do I mean by the band of frequencies? Well. The amount of, or the frequencies that are getting through to this point and are being tuned at this point, and if you look at this, you've got yourself a tuning capacitor here. And this tuning capacitor, in turn, is part, this is going to be a lot of circles, of a bigger tank circuit over here. This is all a tuned circuit. Now you tune it with that tuning capacitor, with that one. That one also happens to be ganged to this one over here, which we'll come to, all right? So this is your tuning condenser, but we'll talk about that in a second. So when you tune this, depending on how your tank circuit has been prepared, in other words, depending on which capacitors, inductors, and resistors are allowed to stay in circuit by the various switches that you have here, which happens when you select long wave, medium wave, or short wave, right? This tank circuit then tunes across that particular band. Now, Let's take the medium wave, for example. The medium wave, it means that this tank circuit with this capacitor as the one variable that you're allowed to play with, okay, can tune sort of, it sort of allows a band of frequencies to go through that extends approximately from, approximately from 550 or something kilohertz which I believe is the start here of the medium wave, uh, 510 kilohertz, to about 1.7 kilohertz. That's your medium wave band, your broadcast band. So depending on where you've switched this, and if you've switched on to medium wave, this tank circuit with this capacitor as its variable allows you to tune anywhere, anywhere along here, along this, along this band over here, okay? So let's say, for example, you set this guy, you're tuning, and you get to a point and you say, ha, huh, I want to listen to this station here. And this station here happens to be at one megahertz, all right? Let's remember that. We want to listen to a station that's at one megahertz. So you tune to that point with this condenser, okay? So what happens now is you're going to get a wave 
with uh, which is one megahertz in frequency, the carrier, and it is amplitude modulated. It's AM modulated. That's why you call it AM modulation. The amplitude is modulated with the audio that's coming through with the actual radio station content, the stuff you want to listen to at the speaker, right? That's coming through on here, sitting on a one megahertz carrier. And that signal, because it's been tuned by here, goes up. Let's see if I get this right. It goes from here and it goes up to there. Okay? So that's what we've got. We've got ourselves coming into this tube, into the this ECH81 tube. You've got a signal with your audio on it, but it's at one megahertz. Okay? A one megahertz carrier with your audio signal is mixing in. It's going into this blender. All right? This is one of those Kenwood blenders or Bosch. No, hell, let's stick to Braun. This is a Braun blender over here. All right? This is what we got. Now, how do you get that into something that you can actually hear on the radio, right? How do you make that... How do I clean this thing? Damn it. How do you make that listenable? Well, this is where the intermediate frequency comes in. So, down here, down here, we've got another circuit. This circuit over here, this entire... Well, hang on. This entire circuit over here, okay? Together with together with this, this tube, this section of the tube over here. If you see, you've got an anode here, together with, where is it? Hang on, hang on. So that circuit down there, together with this section of the tube, is an oscillator. It's creating an oscillator. And an oscillator is simply a circuit that produces a repeated accurate wave frequency, one frequency, okay? Now, what frequency do we want on here? Well, following the rules or how or the metho methodology of how these radios work, right? You want to create here a frequency which is exactly, in this case, 460 kilohertz above the frequency that you want to listen to here. Now remember, you tuned this frequency here to 1 megahertz. That's where your station is. You want to listen to that, right? So you want this section here to be tuned to 1.46 megahertz, 1,460 kilohertz. And you want it to always be 460 kilohertz above whatever it is you're tuning at the front here, okay? So what do you do? You create another set of tuned circuits with a whole lot of switches, just like this one over here, to select the bands, in other words, long wave, medium wave, and short wave. And then you have the same capacitor here, or you have a capacitor here, this guy, which is ganged to this one. So whenever you tune this guy, you're actually tuning both of them. You see this little click down here, this little dotted line? That means that, that those two are ganged. That's your tuning condenser. And Whenever this thing tunes to 1 megahertz, this one tunes to 1.46 megahertz. If you tune this to 1.1 megahertz, this one tunes to 1.56 megahertz. Geez, it's trying to do maths on the fly. If you tune this thing to 560, this one's going to go huh, 1,020. Okay, 460 above. Okay, always, always. So, because you've tuned this to 1 megahertz, you've tuned this one to 1.46 megahertz. And that signal is being generated within that circuit and this tube. Now, what happens with our brown blender over here? Well, our brown blender is now producing a mixed signal. And by mixed signal, what happens is that you get various outputs from here. This tube produces various signals. One of them is exactly, it reproduces this signal coming in here. In fact, if you think about it, this thing's coming into the grid. Normally, when you send a signal into the grid, it amplifies it and comes out the anode. So you'd say, hey, out of the anode, you're getting this signal. You're getting one megahertz. True. That is true. But you're also getting this signal down here, the one that the oscillator is creating. And that means that out of the anode is 1.46 megahertz. 
Now, there's a difference between those two. The one megahertz signal has got a carry on, it's got a, a audio modulated on it, and the 1.46 megahertz is just a straight carrier, straight signal, no modulation. But that's coming out as well. But then you're also getting the sum of the two. Remember, this is a brown blender. This is designed by Dieter Rams. It's a fantastic blender. It creates all sorts of stuff in the mix. It creates the sum of the two. So you've also got a signal coming out the top here, which is 1 megahertz plus 1.46 megahertz. And this one is now modulated because this is 1 megahertz buzzing around, amplitude modulated, right? And you're getting 2.46 megahertz coming out the top here. Okay, and then, and then, you get the one that you want, which is the difference. Now, the difference will always be 460 kilohertz, right? You're going to get 1.46 minus 1, which is 460. But because this 1 that you're subtracting from the 1.46 is modulated, that 460 kilohertz coming out here is modulated. So what you get coming out here is what you want. What you get coming out here and going on to there is your IF frequency. It's a carrier at the IF frequency. It's a, a signal at the IF frequency, which is modulated with the audio of that station that you're listening to, with the audio information, which is what you want. That's really all you want, okay? Now, how do you get rid of all the other crap that's over here? Because remember, you got the sum, the difference, the individuals, blah, blah, blah. This is a very busy highway over here. So you want to get rid of them. And the best way to do that is to create these filters where you say, show me a ticket, and they show them a ticket. And the one ticket says one megahertz. You say, uh-uh, you can't go through. I don't want you. The other ticket's got 1.46 megahertz. You say, uh-uh, you can't go through. I don't want you. The other guy's got a ticket that says 2.46 megahertz. You kick him out as well. And along comes this lady with a ticket that says 460 kilohertz. You say, yes, that's what I'm designed for. This filter is precisely designed to allow only the IF frequency, only the 460 with the modulation on it, to go through. And that happens here at the circuit. But you see, hey, there's, there's two circuits. In fact, it looks like there's two transformers. Exactly, there are two transformers. This one here, this is the primary of a transformer, and there's the secondary of the transformer. And here it goes again. There's another primary, and there's another secondary. And if you notice, these primaries are actually connected together. In fact, if you go from the anode, if you go from here, uh, yeah, let's, let's, let's follow this. If you go from here, and you go down here, and you then have to go across, and then you have to go, you've got to go up. Jeez, what am I doing up here? Okay, but this is a tuned circuit over here. But then you've got to go up again, and then you've got to go across again, then you've got to go up again, and then across again, unless that switch is, is closed. Then you get to here, and then you go to here, and then you come down here, and you think, where the hell am I going? Where you're going to is the power supply. That resistor there, if I'm not mistaken, takes you to that point there, which goes to B plus 2, okay, the second power supply. So we're following that line over there, that one, that one, and we're carrying on that one, that one. There's a small filtration going on here, and that is supplying. So what you're getting here, this anode, is a supply line. B plus is coming in here. It's going through a load, which happens to be two primaries of IF transformers, and then into your anode, which means that whatever signal is coming out here is actually being generated across this load, right? And when it's generated across this load, it's got to be induced into the secondaries of the respective transformer. So you say, well, why have you got two transformers? Well, somebody discovered a long time ago that when you use 460 kilohertz or 455, which a lot of American radios use, it has no effect on another tuned circuit, if you put that in series, tuned for a much higher frequency. And that's the actual IF for FM, which is 10.7 megahertz, which is a hell of a lot more than 460 kilohertz, right? So the 460 kilohertz going through goes straight through that guy, doesn't do anything to it. 
It doesn't induce because it's not tuned for that. It's tuned so far out of that that it just doesn't play a role. And therefore, this is the one that plays the role. It induces that 460 and allows it to go through to the primary, to this side. And suddenly on this side, you've got yourself a signal. And this signal is actually going into, when it's induced on here, it's induced here and it goes there and it goes there. And guess what? It goes into an amplifier. This signal that you've allowed through, the lady with the 460 kilohertz ticket, and she's carrying a radio station on her back, she's been allowed through. Not only that, she's been passed all the way to the input of a tube whose role is to amplify. Okay? And that's enough BS from me because after that, this gets amplified, it goes up here, it goes across here, it goes through another circuit, and here's another IF transformer. This one is another FM transformer, which we're not interested in, but if you follow this line, if you follow this line here, you see that it goes through there, through there, through there, and boom, here's another IF transformer, and this one is the one we're interested in because it induces and passes that through. You tune it, you fine tune it, so it goes through, when it's come through, boom, it goes out here and you find it goes to one of those things. That's a diode. That's sort of going to rectify your uh, signal to start re removing or extracting the audio, the amplitude modulated audio from your uh, 460 kilohertz signal. And that's where the decoding happens and then the signal comes out and where does it go to, brother? It'll come out here, here. Here, 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 there. Uh, it actually uses two diodes, does it? One diode there. That's the FM. Let me just follow this through. It goes to that diode. And then it goes to here. Yeah. That signal that's being induced here is across this point, which is actually the output. When you select medium wave, or rather when you select, uh, yeah, medium wave, um, when you select FM, it goes to the top one. So this thing does your decoding, um, demodulation, okay, of your audio from that 460 kilohertz carrier, okay, and it sends it through here. But what we're going to align, what we are going to align is this guy here, this little transformer here, uh, this one here which has a coil and a capacitor in parallel on this side, and a coil and a capacitor in parallel on this side. And then we're going to make sure that the lady's ticket is valid all the way through, and we're going to align that guy. So we actually align four filters, all right? It's actually four, it's not two. We align two IF transformers, but we're actually aligning four filters. And here, here they are. There's number four, there's number three, there's number two, and there's number one. So four, three, two, one. It doesn't really matter what order you do them in, because the way you're going to do this, and now we've got to zoom out a bit, the way you're going to do this is you're going to present to the gate, to, to this guy, to this point over here, to this point over here, right? You're going to present only a 460 kilohertz signal with a tone modulated on it. So you're going to put in here 460, right? Modulated with a tone of one kilohertz, something you can hear, okay? So you, you sort of creating your own radio station. 460 goes in here with a tone. It goes into that tube because it's one of those that's going to come through, right? Remember, whatever comes in here goes through. This is actually going to go straight through. It's going to go through, right? Actually amplified. Yeah. And once it gets here, you're going to open all these sluice gates. You're going to align these. You align this filter. Make sure that 460 is welcome to go through. Everything else is sort of shut away, right? Move off. Then the second filter, three, you're going to align that and make sure that that goes through nice and smoothly. So you're clearing this path, you're creating an archway that this lady can get through. Only this one. The others are getting pushed back. The others are getting attenuated, reduced. They're not allowed to come through, right? So you tune these two together. And then it goes through amplified and the same signal goes and meets these two. 
So you align two, coil two, and make sure that 460 goes through as unhindered as possible so that this one can be tuned, coil one, to allow 460 to again go through as unhindered as possible to there. So once you've cleared the paths, right, you've cleared this path, what have you done? Well, you've actually allowed that signal there with its tone on it to go through, drop its tone off here, it becomes audio, it goes through the audio amplifier, which you know is working, right? And it comes out at the speaker. And what is it that you've got coming out of the speaker? Well, you've got a one kilohertz tone. It's an audio tone, okay? And an audio tone can be measured. It's an AC signal. That's all it is. It's an AC one kilohertz sine wave, right? So you put a multimeter on there and you can put a, a digital uh, multimeter, but I prefer to use an analog one so you can see the needle sort of deviate, it makes it easier. You put a multimeter across the speaker and you would, when you adjust these guys, you know that you can peak it so when you get the highest volume, you know that this pathway has been cleared the best possible. It's been tuned. So that's what you're doing. You are doing that alignment by looking at that meter and making sure that you get the highest voltage, AC voltage re reading possible on your, on your AC voltmeter. That's how you align it. Now, the one thing to do is you need to make sure that this signal that you're sending through, this... Uh, sort of radio signal, this uh, carrier signal with the tone on there, you've got to make sure that it's a pretty small amplitude. Now, the higher the amplitude you make on this thing, the uh, louder it's going to be, and the higher the voltage on your AC voltmeter is going to be. But you make it small enough that you can hear it, that you can discern it, that you can actually measure it, okay, that you can see it on the meter, but not so loud that it starts doing other things. And one of the other things it does is it activates, it creates an AGC voltage, which is a DC voltage. It's actually a negative voltage. The stronger the signal, the bigger the negative voltage. And that negative voltage ultimately gets to this capacitor here. And ultimately, it goes through all that. If you follow the signal, it goes to the grid as well. Now remember, that's a DC voltage. And when it goes to the grid, so what it does is it actually alters the gain of that tube. If this is zero volts, which will never be, it'll be like minus two, okay, in its normal state, that tube will have a certain gain and will amplify that IF signal a certain amount. If it's too high and it, this thing creates a uh, higher negative voltage, that'll go up there and reduce that gain because the more negative this is, the less current goes through, okay? The less um, uh, gain this thing will have. So you're basically trying to control the gain of this whole thing so that loud signals, loud stations, and low volume stations, low power stations, can come through more or less at the same amplitude. So when you're aligning this, you don't want that AGC voltage to affect your gain. So you keep it quite low. But um, I'll show you, it's not so low that you can't hear it and you will be able to hear it. Now, I've got to warn you, this description, this sermon is probably 20 times longer than it actually takes to do it if nothing goes wrong. But hopefully it won't. Um, it's quite easy to do. I'm going to show you one step at a time. And um, hopefully that'll help you if you have any doubts. <laughs> I'm sure most of you don't. But if you do have any doubts on how to align the IF, the AMIF on a radio like this, you've now received a rather longish description. All right, let's get on with it. Signal generator is producing a carry of 460 kilohertz. That's the IF frequency. It's at 1.4 millivolts RMS. That's as low as it'll go. I've got AM modulation on there with a depth of 30% of a 600 hertz signal. AM modulation is on and I've activated the output. Now the signal from the signal generator is probably too high so I've got it coming into the stepped attenuator, switched attenuator. I have 12 dB on. In other words I'm reducing that by about 12 dB. 
I'll determine whether I need to reduce it by more or not, depending on what the signal sounds like. The signal's coming in to pin 2 of the ECH81. I've actually soldered that blue wire on there to pin 2. It's coming out the top of the chassis and I've got the uh, crocodile clip connected to that. The ground of the signal is just connected to the chassis. I've got the speaker connected and to the speaker I've got those two crocodile clips which are actually the AC millivolt meter which is sitting over here on AC millivolts. The radio I have uh, medium wave selected. I've put the uh, tuning around the middle of the band and I've got the volume on zero. Now as I turn up the volume we can hear it quite well actually. So much so that I need to reduce the amplitude again. So I'm going to reduce it, cut it another 6 dB. You can still hear it quite well. Put the volume up even further. Give it another 3 dB. Looks like I'm going to have to go all the way. I'm going to give it 18 dB and then drop the 12. There we go, I can hear it, but let's just make it a little bit stronger. That's about right. So I can discern the signal, but I've got some uh, static, which means that the AGC probably isn't kicking in. Good. I'll swap out the uh, speaker for a 5.6 ohm dummy load. I'll put the volume on zero. This is just so we don't have to hear the noise. Connect the millivolt meter, AC millivolt meter across that again. Now, if I turn the volume up, there we are. I'll reduce the volume just a little there so we get it to the middle and I'm going to start tweaking. Now I showed you where the controls were, which filters I was going to tune and I'm going to start with the top one here. See if we get any joy. Oh yeah. Okay, that's going up, that's going up and now it's going down. So it looks like I'm peaked sort of over there. Nearly peaked. I'll come round once again. I'll do the bottom one now. I can reach it. Nope, wrong way. Oh, that's nice. I think I'm going to drop the attenuate another 3 dB now. Just to reduce the signal again. There's our peak. That seems to be about a peak. Okay. At the top. Whoa. Okay. This is what I'm going to have to do. I'm going to attenuate another 12 and remove the 6 and the 3. So I've attenuated another 3 dB effectively. We go again. Oh, that was about the peak. There it goes down. There it goes down. So I've gone through the peak, which is about over there. Okay. Now I'll try the bottom one. If I can see it. There we go. Wrong way. That's about a peak there. All right. Now I'm going to do them all again. All over again. Try and perfect it a bit more. That 
is peaked. And that, my friends, is it. That's all. That's all it takes to adjust the IF on the AM. The one thing I need to do is I need to uh, feed this through a dummy antenna into the antenna itself. And I need to then peak, or actually I need to adjust, I think it's this guy, yeah, this guy, for a minimum. So let's see what we get there. Now with this thing it's really difficult. You've got a very high signal because you're putting it through the IF trap. So let's see if it makes any difference. I've got the speaker back on. It goes up. And it goes up again. So the minimum seems to be about there, which I think is more or less where it was. Got rid of the wax from there. So that was done. Let me try again. It's a really high signal coming in there. So our minimum is about there. At this point you've got a lot of noise. Keep that off. There's a lot of noise because we've got a very um, very small signal or very high signal coming in, but it's being, being very well attenuated by that coil. In other words, the IF trap has been optimally, optimally set. Good. Let me carry on then. There is something else I want to show you very quickly. So what have we got here now? Well, what I've done is I've set this up to do a, a visual um, alignment. And what that means is that I can uh, connect the signal in the same place as before, by the same path as before, but instead of uh, putting in a signal at the IF frequency, I actually put a sweep between about 10 kilohertz below the IF frequency and 10 kilohertz above the IF frequency. Something like that, all right? Now what I'm doing is, let's see what I've set it up to. So I've got a sweep starting at 400, that's too low. This IF is 460, so I'm going to do 20 kilohertz below, so 440 kilohertz. It's going to stop at 20 above, so 480 kilohertz. And I want a time which um, corresponds to an even number of radicals on the, on the scope. Now this scope has got 14 vertical radicals. Is it two, four, six? Yeah, seven each way. So I'm going to make these, uh, what, 10 milliseconds, so 140 milliseconds. Okay. 140 milliseconds means that every one of those radicals is 10 milliseconds. Now, if you look at the scope, you can see that I'm getting two, two sort of thingies there. Now, what this is, is the scope, the signal generator, is sending a sig signal, a sync signal, which is a square wave, which you can see on the scope in, in purple or pink, whatever. And that means every time the sweep starts, it starts a period of that wave. And I can use that as uh, input it to channel two. So what we see here is exactly that. We see the bell curve and the period of that sweep is exactly the, num the right number of radicals across, 140 uh, milliseconds. If I made this 280, it'll slow the sweep down, but then I would have to make the time base 20 milliseconds per division. So you see you get the same thing. The slower it is, actually, I believe the more accurate it's going to be. So I prefer to leave it at about 280. Now, what I'm reading is the uh, AGC voltage as it comes out of the, uh, the diode. And we'll go into that, and there's a lot of that. I've done it before. I just wanted to check what the alignment's like. I can go one step further. Instead of doing 20 kilohertz below and 20 kilohertz above, I can make it, say, let's start at... Um, 
What's a seven? So let's start at four. Four sixty, four fifty-three kilohertz, and let's stop at four sixty-seven. There we go. That is our curve. That is our passband of the alignment. And as you can see, it's a pretty even curve. If I drop the attenuation a bit. I can do fine adjustment just to get it where I can see it properly. That is a pretty fine looking bell curve. You can see there's some RF still on the uh, on the wave. That is normal. It hasn't gone through the final filtering. So you're seeing the response of those IF filters, the IF transformers, around the 460 kilohertz level, which is exactly what we want. That's a pretty good bell curve, which means by aligning it the way we've done it, we couldn't have done it better by visual alignment. At least I don't think I could have. This was perfect, which is great. Great stuff. And I don't have to listen to it. What I'll do if you want, just leave some comments. I can uh, go into this visual alignment technique a little bit more in more detail. But what you're seeing on the screen there is precisely the joining of all the pass bands, all the bell curves of the respective of the respective uh, filters just coming into one and uh, creating a, a, a clear path for the IF frequency. I have one more step to do, IF alignment of the FM and then we'll see how the RF alignment is. If it's not too badly off, I probably won't touch it, but we'll see how we get along. So I want to thank you for watching and if you've enjoyed that, click like, share, subscribe and all that jazz. And if you want to support the channel directly, you can do so on Patreon. Bye for now. Stay safe.